Hi, I'm Mason Vale from Boise State University. In this video, we're going to introduce one of the pillars of object-oriented programming, encapsulation. Pillars of object-oriented programming are the big ideas or central ideas of object-oriented programming. Depending on who you ask, you'll get a list of either three or four items that are pillars of object-oriented programming. But regardless of how the list is laid out, the concept of encapsulation is always present in some form. Let's start by talking about what makes up the identity of an object. When we write a class that's used as the blueprint for creating objects, we define a certain set of data or variables that make up the identity of an object. These are the pieces of information that make one object different from another. And put together, those data, those variables, are the identity of the object, the state of the object. So if I was defining something like a student class to represent student objects, the student would have information like a name, an ID number, an address, and other information. And each individual student object would have some value for each of those variables, but the the information would be different from one student to another. So those are the pieces of information that make up the identity of a student. They make the student different. Likewise, if I were defining a book, the title of the book, the author of the book, the copyright and other information, make that book uniquely identifiable. They make the book different from other books. Um, and there are many examples of classes, each of which has its own defined data that make up the state of each object of that type. Because these pieces of information are so critical to the identity of each object, it's very important that we respect the boundaries of each individual object and we only interact with that information that makes up that object in approved ways. If you imagine that we're representing uh, your bank account in an object of type bank account, it contains very important information like your name, your account number, your current balance. And there are specific ways that we would consider to be valid to interact with an account balance. We would want to have methods for deposits, withdrawals, um, applying fees, assessing interest. But we don't want someone to be able to simply reach in and change the balance through direct access. We, we would be violating the integrity of that object if we did that. So in my example here, I have a for each loop, loop that's navigating through a set of accounts in a collection and setting all of the account balances to zero directly. I didn't go through any deposit method or withdrawal method. Uh, I just zeroed out everyone's account. That's the sort of thing that we do not want to allow in our programs. We only want to interact with objects through a limited set of valid interactions. So is it possible to guarantee that data can only be affected by valid operations? Yes. Encapsulation is the concept of protecting an object's data so that it can only be modified through a limited interface. In most languages, encapsulation is primarily enforced through the use of visibility modifiers. Visibility modifiers are keywords that specify where can data and operations be seen and used. In Java, the primary distinction for visibility is between public visibility and private visibility. With public visibility, a piece of data or a particular method can be seen anywhere. As long as the user has access to an object reference, they would be able to see a, a variable or they would be able to see a method and call that method. Private, on the other hand, limits the visibility of data to only within the class where the data or the method was defined. So private visibility excludes visibility to the outside. It's only internal visibility. Visibility modifiers should be explicitly applied to all instance or class variables, constants, and methods. Uh, the best practice is that the visibility of all instance variables and all internal support or utility methods should be private. That is how we're going to enforce encapsulation. So all instance variables, those variables that make up the state of an object, should be declared private so that the only access to those variables will be through 
some uh, explicitly exposed method, public method. The only methods that should be declared public are those that are intended to be called by outside users. So don't include internal uh, private utility methods, only include methods that are intended to be called by an outside user. That distinction between private data and private utility methods and the public methods creates the limited interface that helps us to enforce encapsulation. So again, all instance variables and internal support methods, those methods that are used internally but are not intended to be called by someone else, should be explicitly declared as private. And the only methods that are declared public should be those that are intended to be called by someone outside of this object. Visibility modifiers don't change the scope of variables or methods within a class. So anything that was declared as an instance variable at the top of a class is still visible throughout all of the code in the class. Methods that are declared as private within the class can still be called from other methods within the class. The only impact of a visibility modifier has to do with external visibility. Can someone from outside this object directly access a variable or a method by name? Just because we set the visibility of our instance variables to be private doesn't mean that we're cutting off all access to these variables. It's very common for us to supply some combination of accessor or getter methods and mutator or setter methods to allow people to interact with instance data inside of a particular object. So methods that are created to return the current value of an instance variable are referred to as accessor methods or often commonly called getter methods because the first word of the method name is often get. For example, you have a name. If someone asks you your name, you are likely to tell them your name and you're not afraid to tell them your name. Giving somebody uh, the information about your name doesn't mean that you have turned over the ability to control your name to that person. No one gets to change your name just because you told it to them. So it's, it's often safe for us to tell someone the information about our instance data by making them call a get method, an accessor method. Likewise, we may allow someone to call a mutator method or a set method in order to change one of our values. But by making someone go through a mutator method, we get a chance to take in the information maybe validate it, uh, decide whether we want to accept that value that's passed in, and we can reject a value. So mutator methods can allow us to enforce rules about how we will allow updates. Keep in mind, you don't have to supply a get method for every instance variable, and you don't have to supply a set method for every instance variable. As the programmer, you get to choose how much access you want to provide, and you get to specify the rules that are enforced when someone calls a set method. We'll look at an example of a simple bank account class that will be a, an example of encapsulation. We start with the class header that specifies that this class is public. Most classes are public. Internally, we're first defining our instance variables, the pieces of information that make up the identity of a bank account, the total state of this bank account. So we have account number that's specified as a long value. We have an account owner, the name of the owner as a string, and we have a current balance as a double. And notice that we have declared the visibility of all three of these instance variables to be private. We will not allow anyone from the outside to directly access these values and change them. The constructor for most classes is also public. Otherwise, we would not be able to create one of these things. We wouldn't be able to call that constructor. So constructors are usually public. Continuing this class, uh, we have everything we saw already above. We're including get methods, accessor methods, for all three of our instance variables. We'll go ahead and let someone know what the account number is if they ask. We'll go ahead and let someone know who the account owner is if they ask. And we'll let them know the current balance if they ask. So these three public methods are an allowed 
public facing set of methods, part of the interface of this class that allows a user to get the account number, the owner, or the account balance if they ask. We're returning the value of each of these variables, but we're not exposing access. We're not giving access to the variable, we're just returning a copy of each of those values. Continuing, we don't have in this class an explicit set method for the, uh, the account balance, but we do have two methods that are serving in a, a mutator role. They allow us to update the account balance, but only according to certain rules. We have two public methods, a deposit method and a withdraw method. Each of these is a kind of method that allows us to interact with the bank account, uh, the account balance. So in the case of a deposit, the user of this method would have to pass in the amount that they want to deposit. We do a quick validation check to make sure that the amount passed in is a positive number. So we won't allow someone to try to deposit a negative number, that would be a withdrawal. So if the amount to add is greater than zero, then we will update the account balance by adding that amount to our account. Otherwise, we'll throw an exception, letting the user know that they tried to add an invalid amount. With our withdraw method, we also do a validation check. The amount to withdraw has to be a, po a positive number, amount to withdraw has to be greater than zero, and we're also checking to make sure that our account balance is greater than or equal to the amount that is being withdrawn. We will only allow a withdrawal of an amount we actually have in our account balance. So we've managed to do two steps of validation before we allow this withdrawal to take place. If we pass those two conditions, then we go ahead and subtract the amount to withdraw from our account balance. Otherwise, we throw an exception. So in summary, encapsulation is the idea of protecting instance data, the state information for an object, by using visibility modifiers to prevent outside direct access. We only allow interaction with that state information, those instance variables, through a limited public interface.